I'm gonna show you how you can strength train for Olympic weightlifting, and we're gonna start right now. So the needs of weightlifting are absolutely incredible, right? We have to know that there's gonna be some technical skill involved. There's gotta be technical precision. There's gotta be a method that we're implementing as coaches that we're constantly focusing on honing in on their craft, right? These weightlifters are constantly zeroing in on those specific areas to improve their movement. We know that we need a large amount of absolute strength to improve performance. We know that there's a correlation between back squats and cleans and front squats and cleans and pulls and how we're hitting cleans and snatches. All these things are based around weightlifting. We also know that accessory work has to be very, very precise to improve structural integrity. If we're not targeting specific areas based off of limb lengths and based off of you know past sports that these athletes have played, now we're gonna see a breakdown. So we have to have proper accessory work put into place. And then finally, weightlifters still need to be athletic. They have to be explosive. They have to be able to recruit a large amount of high threshold motor units at a very, very fast pace. Okay, so we need to understand and all of the different tasks that weightlifters have to do. Technical coordination, absolute strength, accessory work, and still being athletic. And those are those key concepts we have to understand as we get into the rest of the development behind an Olympic weightlifter. So how does this help us as coaches? We have to start right off with good technique. Okay, if we don't have good technique, if our weightlifters don't have good technique, they're not gonna be able to perform well. Okay, so if we understand, one, technical models, establish a technical model. Pick someone who moves very well. Lu Zhao Jun, Jin Chung Kuo, Haley Reichert, right? These are really good technical models that you can pick. Norik Vardanian, great technical model. These are all technical models that we can now use as guides for our weightlifters. The weightlifters can see how these athletes moved and try to emulate their position. So they have a means of working towards that end goal of moving like Lou, right? So if we see that, now we can start to pick variations and we can start to couple different technical cues with variations to get our athletes to move like their technical model while they still have their own personal style and flair. So that takes us into the strength focus. I like to use a couple different key percentages here. If we just looked at the 80% rule, and then we can sort of base off of that 80% rule where each individual is and work on those weaknesses. And I'll walk you through this here. So your snatch should be 80% of your clean, ideally in a perfect world. Some people that might be as high as 86% of their best clean. Some people it might be lower, it might be 77% or 78% of their best clean. Ideally, let's just start snatch is 80% of our best clean slash clean and jerk. Okay, so now we have our clean. Our cleans here, we wanna see our best clean be about 80 to 85% of our best front squat. Some people occasionally will be able to clean and jerk their best front squat. I know Yuri Vardanian was known for this. I think he had front squatted something like 225 or 230 and his best clean and jerk, I believe was around 225 or 222, somewhere around that realm. So he could clean and jerk basically what his best front squat was. Typically you'll see most athletes will hit a clean and jerk here and then their best five rep front squat is what their clean and jerk is okay so that's going to be about 80 percent some athletes it might be closer it might be 85 to 90 percent now jacob horse is one of these cases for us personally whereas Haley reichert's a little bit below 80 percent so you can just use that as a guide and then we'll take that we have our front squat should be about 80 percent of our best back squat and if you use these numbers now you can start to figure out strength wise, where do we fall on this you know, spectrum? Where do we fall here? And then try to improve or close the gap so that we're a little bit more efficient with those specific numbers. That takes us into that accessory based strength training. And now what I like to do is if we're thinking about accessories and typically, you know, bodybuilding style work, maintenance work, you know, lower back work, mobility work, I like to look at two different aspects. One, what are the problem areas going to be for a weightlifter? Typically, it's going to be back, 
knees, shoulders, okay? Back, knees, shoulders, without fail, okay? So we have to create some sense of a program that's gonna have reverse hypers, glute, ham, and then some mobility for their lower back. We might need sled work, we might need Spanish squats, something along these lines, and then shoulder work, dumbbell external rotation, some upper back work, making sure we're maintaining that mobility. But the second factor outside of just what's taking a pounding in the sport of weightlifting is that we have to bring in what are the limb lengths of the individual? Do we have someone who has longer legs and they can pull very, very well, but then when they catch cleans or they catch snatches, it crashes on them a little bit. So then they have a little bit of stress in their knee. Or do we have someone who has shorter limb lengths? They have shorter legs, so they don't have a ton of knee problems, but maybe they get more stress on their lower back because they're so short limbed, they're not very good pullers. So now we can understand how does limb length impact how we're designing that strength-based program. And then that takes us into the accessory work that's going to be more athletic focused. So we actually term this as athlete day. So we need to see how much unilateral work does the individual need? How much bilateral explosive work does the individual need? Typically, if we have someone who split jerks, they're gonna favor one side over the other. And we can start to see that when squats rotate to one side, or if they go to recover in the jerk and they might recover and they can't put their feet back together evenly without looking at them, they're favoring one side over the other. So then we can take that information and say, all right, let's do some more unilateral plyometric work that focuses on their non-dominant side in the split. And that's gonna try to alleviate some of that stress. We also know that they need a lot of dynamic trunk control. They're hitting these big splits overhead. They've gotta be stable in their trunk when they're in that split position. They're hitting big snatches. So we need to be stable with our trunk and that goes into high intensity chaos coordinated movements. So plyometric movements that are gonna focus on dynamic trunk control. So how do we apply all this information? We heard about the 80% rule, then we heard about how we can improve technique, you know, and having that technical model. And now, okay, how do we take the accessory work and actually apply it into some sense of a program? So right off the bat, I would recommend if we look at it, the sport is snatch and clean and jerk. That's the sport, okay? Snatch, clean and jerk. It's just like football, offense, defense, special teams. So we should probably snatch and clean and jerk daily. Yes, daily. I recommend doing both daily, okay? Because that's what the sport is. Now, if we have a glaring problem, we might just focus on a specific area. Maybe we just do split jerks on a day because the split jerk is terrible for a specific athlete. That's perfectly fine. But what I like to do is say, all right, if we have snatch, we're gonna have one heavy day. We're gonna have one very, very technical day. So it's a little bit lighter. And then one day that we would auto-regulate where you can go heavy if you want, or you can stay technical and just imprint good movement. Now, if we get into clean and jerk, I wanna have one heavy day, one moderate day and one technical day. Now, like I had mentioned, we're gonna do these on the same day, okay? So you can start to play around with the sequencing. Maybe you go heavy here and snatch, and then you go technical with clean and jerk, but that takes us into the variations. If we find problem areas at least twice a week, we wanna use variations. So we find problem areas. Maybe we're arm bending. Maybe we're getting on our toes early. We're jumping our feet all over the place. We're banging the bar. We're looping the bar. Now we can find those variations variations that break down those specific areas and we can use them to improve our overall technique. And then as we get closer to big competitions, we can use the variations that elicit a monster response to improve their competitive movement. Remember, the whole goal is that we snatch and we clean and jerk heavier. So we have to use variations to iron out any problems with technique and then lead to these bigger competitive performances. So that takes us into strength-based work. So if we're going to improve a back squat, a front squat, clean pulls and snatch pulls, where does that go, right? So what I recommend is try to use heavy front squats or heavy back squats, plan it around lighter days or plan it around days uh, where there's gonna be a rest day following up. Typically, I also like to plan it if you have a day off, you'll back squat that next day after a day off. Also, if you wanna push a front squat on a day that you would use just split jerks, 
now you can push that front squat because you didn't execute a clean. So that's how you can sort of play that game. And then the athlete development days would be at least once a week where you might need a little bit of a refresher, a little bit of a break from the heavy lifting, and you just do an athlete focused day. Okay, so bringing it all back together, we went over everything that you need. You need technique, you need strength, you need to improve your accessory work so you have a more structurally stable organism or athletes are more structurally stable. Then we went into how can we train all these different areas. We provided, all right, we need to have a technical model. We need to focus on technique. We have the 80% rule that can carry across that we can use just as a baseline. Figure out where you're at and then use technical variations, use technique and technical thought and cues and use strength movements to improve your technical patterning. And then always try to train with a little bit of athleticism every single week. And then that's gonna lead to bigger responses. If you need a program, if you need a guide, we have the Parabolic Periodization book and course that you can click in the description down below. This is a whole book and course derived around weightlifting training and around how you can better design your programming. And we also have a weightlifting technique course to help you move a little bit more effectively. Freaks, if you guys wanna be champions, you've always gotta cultivate your power. Peace.